Okay, so tonight I'm going to talk about John Cope. John Cope, it's the name of a song. It's a weird name for a song. Actually, it's the name of someone I understood that it was, it used to be a very long time ago in United Kingdom, Great Britain, a general. I'm not going to tell you the story of John Cope because honestly, uh, before this song, before I heard this song for the first time, it was about two years ago, I had no idea who John Cope was. <laughs> so I think that you will find exactly the same thing as I did. Um, you go on internet, you type John Cope. Uh, be careful because I saw that there was a second John Cope who is a politician. I don't think it's about this one. The one I'm talking about, I took notes. The one I'm talking about uh, was born in 1690 and died in 1760. He is famous for the defeat at the Battle of Presto Pans in 1745. So that's all what I'm going to tell you about this man. I don't know much. You must not mix up also with Jean-François Copé, who is a French politician. Every time I think of this song, I think of Jean-François Copé because Jean-François Copé is still alive and I know who he is and Jean is John actually in English so it's funny because this guy his name is Jean-François Copé but it's written like Cope but we say Copé in French and he's passionate about history <laughs> so for me this song has already a very strange title to me Marcolis took the name John Cope several times to hide the fact it was him, like a pseudonym. I don't know if we say pseudonym in English, so we are a fake name. His fake name is John Cope. Well, now he has to find another one because everybody knows. <laughs> so I absolutely love this song, um, but it, it goes even beyond loving a song. It it has a very special effect on me and I am wondering if I'm the only one in this situation. It is the kind of song that I absolutely can't listen to when I'm doing something else. I wanted to do this video much before. I wanted to do a video about this song because this song is very special. But I had some work to do and I couldn't work and listen to the music in the same time. Sometimes it happens that I can listen to music and do some work in the same time. Here it's impossible. Because when you listen to a music like that, you don't need dope anymore. That is your dope. You are in a weird state. <laughs> And I'm not uh, the kind of person taking dopes, I'm not under influence, but it's how I imagine being on dope, you know. I was listening to that yesterday evening because I thought, okay, now I want to do this video, I finished my work, now I can listen to it. So it was very late at night, maybe 1 or 2 a.m. and I put my headphones but completely, I mean the full sound in the headphone. And I hadn't listened to music uh, during a while, maybe during one week. And the fact of listening to that, it was like, like if the wind came to my face and I was like in another dimension. I 
I was thinking, okay, I love this song, but it has something more. Um, what? What is the thing which is which makes the song different? When I listen to this song, I see images right away. Uh, a specific image actually I'm not going to give you the detail because I want to keep that for myself because I want to do a painting about it so if everybody does the same thing it's not going to be my painting anymore but I can tell you that when I hear this song what I see I see this that's why I'm wearing it that's what I see I don't know if you are familiar with that, for me it's pretty obvious, but maybe some young people don't know what it is. Make love, not war, peace and love, that is that. For me this song is that, make love, not war, peace and love. When I listen to this song, I have the feeling that he wanted, Marcolis wanted to show how it is to be under influence. Um, this kind of feeling, a little surrounded by something. I don't know how to explain that. Like if you are tripping. Yes, tripping is the word, I would say. Second feeling if we had to make love to a music it would be this one because when I listen to it after having not listened to it during a long time and not having listened to music in one week when I listened to it again I was like whoa <laughs> okay it's very intimate I would say and very um, 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 it makes it makes you feel a little troubled uh, how, how a little um, confused a little um, okay I, I see myself in a bed with someone right now you know <laughs> That's very weird to speak about a song and saying things like that. Well, you know, sometimes slows uh, are very uh, hot and you see yourself in a bed with someone. But this song, it's not the kind of song to dance slow with a man. No, it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of... Uh, I see more movement. I see... Uh, some dance, I see some lava lamp, you know, the 70s, 60s, 70s, I see that, some incense, uh, someone smoking something, you know, <laughs> a lot of smoke. <laughs> I didn't smoke anything and I'm not under influence, I'm just under the music, so imagine the effect that it makes. Okay, let's remain on the fact why why i'm thinking you know this song has been made well has been released at least in 1988 and for me if you told me this song has been made in 1967 68 i would totally believe it why because it's totally the kind of sound that we had when I was a child and I could listen to this kind of music. For me, it's a reality. It's something that I experienced when I was a child. So when I listen to that, I'm like, Ooh, I'm drawn back in my memory, you know, when I was a child, except that when I was a child, I was not thinking of being in a bed with a man, you know. <laughs> I was just like, whoa, that's very psychedelic music, I'm going to draw on it. I still want to paint or draw on it, but it has a further effect, I would say. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to insist on that. However, there is something that I want to make listen to you. 
I don't know what there is at the beginning, they say something. I am going to make you listen to something specific and then I will explain to you what I hear. Listen to that. So you heard the, um, I think it's, I'm not sure, but I think that it's the organ which makes that. Tim Freeze Green, probably, who is playing. I think that Tim Freeze Green has a lot to do with the arrangements in this song. And they, he composed the song, if I understood well, with Marcolis. The lyrics are by Marcolis, but the music is by both Marcolis and Tim Freeze Green. And I hear a lot of Tim Freeze Green in this song. I think because if you listen to what um, Tim Freeze Green does uh, when he's alone, you can understand uh, the Hammond organ is typically what he likes. And uh, Marcolis too, but I can hear his influence, I would say, in this song. If you listen to the organ that I just played now, you will see that it looks a lot like something else that I'm going to play now. So every time I listen to this song, it makes me think of Riders on the Storm by the Doors. Just, not the song, just the organ. It is typical of that period. Uh, Ray Manzarek, who used to play the organ, was playing that. It's something which is very typical. It's, a, it's kind of a little jazzy. Zarek uh, was coming from Chicago and he grew up in the jazz music. And here it has something jazzy also like that and it's very typical of that period. So Riders on the Storm was released in 1971. It's uh, more... LA Woman is more a bluesy album, but with a little jazz. And here, even if Riders on the Storm and this song have nothing to do with each other, there is still a common point according to me. Th that's what I hear when I listen to this song and I hear this organ. Automatically I think of Riders on the Storm. I'm not saying that Marcolis or Tim Freeze Green did that purposely to make think of the doors. It's my feeling. It's not the first time that I see a doors reference in the Talk Talk music or in the Marcolis music and Marcolis himself said that he was influenced also, not only, but also by the doors. So maybe I saw something he didn't think about and uh, I see it. Um, it's just my, my feeling. I just tell you what I feel. So you must know that John Cope was a song which was on a B-side on a B-side. I can't believe it was on a B-side. It was on the B-side of the single of the song I Believe in You. So if you think of what I was saying at the beginning of this video about my feeling that it's like if we are on dope by listening to this song and you think and you know that they put that on the B-side of I believe in you, then suddenly it makes sense. Honestly, I didn't know uh, on which single it was the B-side. I didn't know, so I checked on A-sides, B-sides. So here is where you are going to find John Cope. So the album is A-sides, B-sides. Actually, it's two CDs. First CD, it's mostly uh, remix and extended version of famous songs. 
second album, second CD. It's mostly demos of famous songs. Sometimes the demos are really good, you know, uh, sometimes they are almost better than the, the final result. And you have also many besides. I would put this song with, uh, if I, we had to make some groups of songs, I would put this song with It's Getting Late in the Evening and For What It's Worth. Not the same kinds of songs, uh, three different songs, but the quality is as good. It seemed that the song was made in the same time as Spirit of Eden, but uh, they didn't take the song because it was not good enough to put on Spirit of Eden. So I think that the song is good enough. It's just that maybe it doesn't fit exactly on Spirit of Eden. I agree with that. It's a very, it's a song which is, which looks like nothing else, you know, it's, it's a one of a kind song. Some, I read someone who was saying uh, on a forum or on YouTube, I don't remember where, the person was saying it was just the link between uh, the color of spring and spirit of Eden. I understand what the person meant, but I still think that it doesn't belong to the color of spring and it doesn't belong to spirit of Eden. It's really a song which has a life by itself. A wonderful, wonderful song. I'm going to read you the lyrics, which are very, very simple, not a lot of lyrics. Weapons at my feet, some kind of living. Weapons at my feet, some kind of living. Beggar sits to plead, some kind of giving. Beggar sits to plead, some kind of giving. So, lyrics, very simple, a lot of repetition. It speaks about weapons, what makes sense, because we are talking about John Cope, who was a general. So, it's speaking about killing, killing. So, weapons at my feet, some kind of living. Beggar sits to plead, so the, there is a person standing, it's a, probably a soldier or General John Cope, and he has weapons at his feet. And a beggar sits <coughs> to plead, some kind of giving. So, the person at his feet is hoping that the person standing is going to give him something, which is of course absurd because the person standing has some weapons at his feet, so he plans to kill and the beggar hopes that someone is going to give him something. <clears throat> there is kind of a surrealistic situation here. I'm not sure that the lyrics are the most important in the song. I think it's, uh, it's the whole thing which is important. The music sings also. It's not only the singer and it's not only the lyrics. It's not uh, only about the lyrics in this song, according to me. So I see another link with Riders on the Storm because Riders on the Storm is also someone who kills. Uh, Riders on the storm. Okay. Into this house we are born, into this world we thrown. Uh, like a dog without a bone, uh, an actor out alone. Riders on the storm. There's a killer on the road. His brain is squirming like a toad. Take a long holiday. Let your children play. If you give this man a ride, sweet family will die. Killer on the road. So it's about killing. It's about danger. It's another kind of killing. It's not the war. It's something else. But we are still talking about killing. Girl, you gonna love your man. Girl, you gonna love your man. 
So I see a common point between the two songs because of that, because John Cope is a general, he's doing war, it means death, it means kill, it means there is a killer on the road and we go back to Riders on the Storm. After all uh, drugs kill, so there is there is a link, even if the music is uh, smooth and soft and we all almost want to sleep on it, maybe it was a way to show the danger of drugs, maybe. However, when I listen to Riders on the Storm, I don't have the same feeling as uh, in the song John Cope. Uh, Riders on the Storm, it's more tense. The first time I heard this song, I was a child and I was in a car and it was raining. And I heard that I was very small and I was scared by the song and by the voice of the singer too. It's strange because the song John Cope is talking about war, about weapons, about beggar pleading and the song seems completely uh, in space, <laughs> in another space, you know. So there is a contrast between the lyrics, the theme and the music, but that is something that we see all the time in the Tok Tok music. It's not new, he always does that. The music can be very happy and the lyrics very sad and it's always like that with him so I, I'm not surprised. I was a lot thinking about this instrument by listening to the song and the organ and actually by listening to it better it's not that, I don't think it's that, I think it's more, um, I don't know how we call that, you know like it's shaped like an egg and there is something inside which makes noise. I think that it's rather that that they use. But I still see that. I don't know why it is for me. I think about that right away. I played the song for my son and right away he told me, oh, it makes me think of the Dundee Warhol. And I checked on uh, YouTube under the video and someone said the same thing. So I don't know really well the Dandy Warhols. I know a few songs of them, but not much. So I can't tell you exactly, but um, maybe, maybe there is a link with the Dandy Warhol. You must maybe check the Dandy Warhol. Obviously they got inspired by Marcolis, which wouldn't surprise me because Marcolis influenced a lot, a lot of people. All what I can say to Mr. Marcolis is that we can only love John Cope. This song is fantastic. I could listen to it the whole day, no problem. Well, I would be uh, in a very weird state at the end of the day, <laughs> that is sure, but I could listen to it the whole day. I love it. I love John Cope. I'm going to stop here because otherwise the video is going to be very long. I wanted absolutely to talk about this song. Actually, someone asked me to talk about the B-sides. And I, at the beginning I thought maybe I could do a video about all the b-sides, but I have so much to say about each b-side that I can't do just one video, I have to do a video for each song, but I really wanted to start with John Cope because, because I love it so much. I love it so much. I am preparing a video about uh, flip-through uh, journal. Uh, so it has nothing to do with Marcolis, but uh, it's still some art and my art is very related to Marcolis and Tok Tok, so somehow there is a link. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it's the case, please give me a thumb up. As I'm saying, it's my only way to know that you liked it. If you have any question or any comment or if you know something that I didn't say about this song, Please tell me, I'm the first one to want to learn. Uh, if you have any information, anything, uh, 
subscribe if you like my video because I do a lot of things about Marcolis and Tok Tok and I plan to continue during a while. I don't know how much time but you know it's always a pleasure for me to talk about this music because it makes me happy. You must just know that the other day so I played actually the whole... I played the disc 2 of uh, this uh, CD, uh, the second CD and my cats who were very excited that day suddenly stopped and listened to the music both of them and they, it made them very calm so I think that is a good information it means that if you are upset, anxious, sad or I don't know what, angry play that, you will feel much better and I can guarantee because it has the same effect on me not that I'm angry every day, but stressed, stressed, yes, very often I play that, I feel so much better. <laughs> See you soon. Bye bye.